Late summer in the country means busy, yet slow days. We wake up early, we go to bed late. We spend our days with plenty to do but without rush, tending to the garden and animals, spending time in the kitchen making fresh meals inspired by what is outside, an afternoon cup of coffee while reading a good book or working on a sewing project during the little one's afternoon nap, and ensuring the children have summer memories to last a lifetime. We've had our share of busy summer days and slow ones too, but every morning and every afternoon are spent the same way with a cup of coffee. Today, my little lady decided to join me for an afternoon coffee. For me, this usually means just a black coffee, but since she is up and ready for a coffee treat, her words, not mine, we both have a little fresh milk added to ours. I'm doing very little coffee and sugar in hers, and mostly just fresh goat's milk. But for my own, just coffee and a splash of milk. Now we need that little bit of energy today because we are going to spend the afternoon making up a batch of mozzarella cheese. I make this with our raw goat's milk on occasion. It's not what I use our milk for the most, especially now that the littlest guy is drinking it. We go through it quite fast, but I've had a few friends asking for some, so I made up a batch. I'm testing out a bit of a new stretching method today just to make the process a little cleaner and a little bit easier. I start by adding a gallon of milk to a large pot and set it to medium heat. While that heats, I am combining one quarter cup of water and one quarter teaspoon of animal rennet in one cup and in another, combining a quarter cup of water and one and a half teaspoons of citric acid. I do like to add the citric acid mixture slowly to the pot of milk while it heats and do the slow up and down stirs to incorporate. You don't want to get the milk moving too much. But once the milk reaches 100 degrees, I am adding in the rennet mixture slowly, mixing the same way to incorporate it, then removing it from the heat and adding a lid, covering it for maybe 10 minutes. I like to check the curds at 10 minutes and see if there is a clean break, meaning 
a knife or the back of a spoon can split the curds with a clean line. If not, I cover again and let it sit until I see that clean break. It needs to be a clean line. Now here's where I'm trying something new. Instead of putting my hands into the pot of whey and cheese, gathering up the curds and stretching them, I am just going to use my spoon to scoop up the curds and let them stretch off of it. At first, they just break and drop, but after a while, they start to stretch more the warmer they get and the longer they sit. Now, I like this because I'm not constantly sticking my hands into the pot. So, one, it's just cleaner, and also it's less of a fuss. I don't have to have the gloves, which I don't have anyway, so I was just burning my hands. Not badly, but it's definitely warm, but it's just less work. It's less messy, less cleanup. And so this went pretty well. Once the cheese is stretching quite a bit, I split it into two pieces and gave it a few stretches before forming it into balls. I actually forgot to salt this cheese, but normally this is when I would add my salt and use the stretches to mix it in. I was also trying out another tip, which is to place the cheese in ice water once it's formed into whatever shape, in this case a ball and this helps it hold its shape. Every afternoon, we try to do a bit of a tidy up. I find that constant cleaning and tidying make for a much happier home, and it turns out less time spent cleaning. My mom has always preached that, but of course, as I usually do, I have to figure it out the hard way instead of just listening. My little girl loves to vacuum and mop, so I find it easier to, on busy days, do a quick pickup myself and then let her come through and vacuum. Now, of course, there are days she has to do the picking up because we have to learn that skill, and it's not her favorite thing. But some days, I am just happy to not have to vacuum or sweep again for the 15th time. And she is still learning a valuable skill. It may not be done perfectly, but it is better than it was. And it usually ends with a proud smile plastered across the cutest little redhead's face. For the next little while, we will be mostly making do with what we have in the freezers, in the pantry, or what comes from the farm. I'm trying to do a big clean out of what food we have stored away. Some of the meals I am making are not my favorite, this being one, but they are ways to use up the random ingredients that we have on hand. So bear with me here and maybe there will be some value in this for you. I know for me, the value comes from being content with what I have, learning to use up ingredients I normally wouldn't use, and being okay with simple, not from scratch meals when I need to be. So in my pantry, I found a can of red enchilada sauce and some store-bought tortillas. I do regularly keep tortillas on hand for quick moments when the kids or my husband just needs something simple, like a wrap. Now I used to make all our tortillas and I still make them on occasion when I feel like it, but not always. Red enchilada sauce, however, is a bit more random. So I want to get that used up. We also have pre-shredded cheese in the fridge, which is not something we hardly ever have. So this evening I am taking advantage of these pre-made ingredients for a very easy and simple supper. Again, this is not something I would normally choose 
or would be excited to eat. So I feel silly now talking about it. I felt silly filming it, but it was still good. And many people would be thankful for the supper. So we will be too. I have leftover chicken in the fridge. So I am just coating each tortilla in enchilada sauce, adding cheese and chicken and rolling them up, then topping them with more sauce and cheese baking until browned at 375 degrees. As I usually do, I left the whey on the stove once I removed the actual mozzarella and let it sit on medium heat for quite a while. This takes a good amount of time, but it's well worth it. I do stir it occasionally to keep it from scorching. We have a lot of corn in the freezer from last year and we canned some this year. So I'm going to throw some in a skillet and fry that up for a quick side. And of course, a summer meal would not be complete without a fresh slice of tomato and onion with salt and pepper. After an hour or maybe two, I like to strain the whey back through a cheesecloth or a flour sack towel and collect the leftover softer and creamier curds for a homemade ricotta cheese. Smooth and silky and not as grainy as store bought and maybe this is not the most traditional or the correct way to make ricotta. I'm not really sure, but what I do know is that this is a no waste effort and leaves us with another cheese product that we love more than anything we could personally buy anywhere near us. This evening, I want to take you around the farm and show you the beautiful boots that High C has generously sent me. I have been in the market for a good boot for a while. I purchased a pair of rain boots last year and have worn them into the ground and it was time for a good pair of actual barn boots. When High C reached out and offered a pair of boots to test out, I was excited and of course said yes. The low price tag for their boots caught my eye first and then second came the many wonderful reviews by other farmers online that I already knew and trusted. I saw that they had a muck boot style of boot called the barn boot and knew it would be perfect for wearing in the garden, out in the field, or in the barn at milking time. The high C barn boot comes in several color options but I chose the black and white plaid. It has these great little handles that are perfect for pulling the boots on or carrying them by. The boots don't actually have to even be pulled on because they're easy to slip on before running outside. You just slip your feet right in. They're lightweight but still sturdy and they do not slide around on my foot like boots have in the past. They are what I've been looking for in a barn boot and more. Now I'm a frugal gal by raisin and by nature, but I still desire good quality despite the frugality and high C provides both. So much so that I ended up grabbing a second pair of boots purchased with my own money in a different style to wear throughout the rest of the summer season and into the colder months. I love to have a cute pair of rain boots on hand to throw on with jeans and a sweater and this green pair just happened to catch my eye. They are 100% waterproof to keep you dry and warm and high C even offers a 100 year lifetime warranty service. High C has offered the code Elizabeth for 15% off any product on their website. Check the description box below to visit the High C website and please don't forget to use the code Elizabeth for 15% off. 
I'm trying both boots out here in the garden, out in the barn for milk and chores, and around the property. So please come and join me on a little farm walk. Late summer in the country is full of plenty of beauty from the meals we make, the flowers that are blooming, and the seasons yet to come. I couldn't imagine being anywhere else, and I'm glad that you are here with me.